Areophyidae is the taxonomic family that comprises russet, rust, and gall mites. Generally speaking, the average russet mite is approximately 200 microns long, with a tapered, tube-shaped, white-tan-colored body that is very distinctive for the group. Despite the vast majority of documented species living innocuously in the environment, certain species like the hemp russet mite, Aculops cannabicola, and the tomato russet mite, Aculops lycopersisi, are highly pernicious pests that can severely cripple the production of many cultivation spaces. Most russet mites are highly host-specific. Not all russet species are equivalent, however, nor are all biocontrol agents and environments going to produce the same results for control. But oftentimes, specific predator pest data is lacking, and some loose extrapolations can and must be made in order to decide on the right biocontrol agent for the situation. This video will serve as a resource assessing several of the more popular predatory mite species in various contexts against various russet mite species for the purpose of comparative extrapolation. Amblyseus swirskii is perhaps one of the most popular predatory mite species studied for russet mite efficacy. It is a type 3b mite, meaning it is a generalist that is adapted to surfaces that are not very dense with trichomes. It is proven to be highly effective against another microscopic mite species, the broad mites. The russet mite it is most deployed against is Aculops lycopersisi, the tomato russet mite, a serious pest of tomatoes and other solanaceous crops. In a 2010 report published in the Journal of Economic Entomology, Aculops lycopersisi was attacked at all stages of life by the type 3b predatory mite Amblyseus swirskii with a type 2 functional response at the prey densities tested. Type 2 responses are common for biocontrol agents. As the density of prey increases, the kill rate of the predator slows. Because predators cannot process food and seek prey at the same time, one of the limiting factors for the attack rate is the handling time, or the time it takes for an individual to process a kill before the next kill can occur. The attack rate for Swirskii was 0.1289 prey per hour, and handling time was 0.2320 hours per prey. These results indicate Amblyseus Swirskii can consume approximately 103.4 tomato russet mite individuals per day. Developmental time of female Swirskii fed on tomato russet mite at 25 degrees Celsius was 4.97 days, and on cattail pollen, 6.16 days. In this current study, the 5-day developmental time of Swirskii fed on tomato russet mite was shorter than that of tomato russet mite at the same temperature in a 2003 report by Hawk and Kawai, which was 5.5 days at 25 degrees Celsius for the russet mites. Crucially, biocontrol agents that reproduce quicker than their targets are likely to overmatch the population, especially if they have a high attack rate. Interestingly, this developmental time was also shorter than when fed on more common prey, such as Franklinella occidentalis, the western flower thrips, and thrips tabasi, the onion thrips, at approximately 7.8 days, documented in a 2008 report by Wimmer. Predation rates of Swirskii on tomato russet mite, in the presence of alternative food sources such as pollen, first instar thrips, or whitefly eggs, were 74, 56, and 76 percent respectively, compared with the predation rate on russet mite alone. The mean number of russet mite kills increased dramatically with prey density. It is common for the kill and oviposition rates of biocontrol agents to change in response to prey density. As an agent of biocontrol, there is a maximum amount of kills that can be expected of a single individual over the course of their life. It is therefore helpful to evaluate this limit under which a species' attack rate plateaus, as this represents a basic kill expectation per individual. The greater the pest density grows past this limit, the longer the pest population will sustain. This makes sense ecologically. Even an exceptionally effective predator has its physiological limitations, and often it is a high reproductive rate that allows a prey population to be successful in the presence of such predators, which builds up naturally. However, if a predator population is introduced, the individuals of which can outcompete the local prey population reproductively and kill a significant number of prey population each, 
then the prey population's major advantage of numerical superiority is neutralized. This advantage can be neutralized faster by simply increasing the rate of predator introduction, but this comes with an increase in cost in commercial production situations. Moving on, in a 1997 report by Broder, Neocilius cucumerus was found to take 9.8 days to develop, and while that population consumed the most prey, and one-fourth of the females tested mated, none of them were able to reproduce on tomato russet mites. Neocilius cucumerus was also found to be unsuccessful at controlling tomato russet mite in a 2003 report by Trott and Cottle, wherein repeat applications over the span of several weeks under experimental greenhouse conditions merely slowed prey development on Solanum lycopersicum palmyro cultivar tomatoes. In that same Broder study, Neocilius phalasis took 6.3 days to develop, from larva to adult, when fed tomato russet mite at 22 degrees Celsius. Unlike Neocilius cucumerus, however, almost all observed females reproduce solely on russet mites, and it was heralded as the best of the four predatory mites being investigated. The other two mites were Phytocilius persimilis, which fed on virtually no russet mites, and Homeopronematis and Kunai which failed to develop to adult stages on russet mites. Neocilius californicus was also found to only slow the progress of tomato russet mite when used reactively in the report by Trott and Cottle. Additionally, Neocilius californicus had poor efficacy against the guava areophyid mite Tagolophus guave in a 2017 report by El Halawani. Intrinsic rate of natural increase was 0.14, finite rate of increase was 1.5, and doubling time was 6.8 days. All of these above factors were the lowest rates in their respective categories in comparison with the prey Tetranicus urticae and Brevipalpus phonesius, against which it performed much better. Additionally, net reproductive rate of Neocilius californicus was highest at 25 degrees Celsius, 22.92 females per female, and lowest at 30 degrees Celsius, 16.74 females per female. The mean generation time decreased from 20.61 to 16.79 days, with increasing temperature up to 30 degrees Celsius. Intrinsic rate of natural increase was maximal at 25 degrees Celsius. References to the research reports I investigated for this video can be found in the description below. It seems to me pretty clear, Amblyceus sorskii and Neocilius phalasis seem to have the best results. However, new information is always coming out, and different contexts and environments might better inform us as to which russet mites would be superior or inferior for certain biocontrols as targets. That being said, however, there is probably a reason why species such as Amblyceus sorskii are so popular. Because of their successes in the past, this will no doubt influence their successes in the future and the amount of research that will be conducted on them to improve their efficacy.